In this video, we're going to talk about the importance of random selection for research. Note that this is not the same as random assignment, which is what we learned about in the experiment video previously. In contrast, random selection is important for all research designs, regardless of what you're doing. We're going to discuss this in the context of a little bit of a story similar to what we did with the facilitated communication video. But before I get too ahead of myself, let's give a definition of random selection. Random selection is simply any procedure that ensures that every person in a population has an equal chance of being chosen to participate in the study. And this is really critical because we want our results to be generalizable, that is, to be high in external validity, what we talked about before as well. Think about it. If you collect a sample, a subset of a population of interest, and that sample is not truly representative of the population of interest, then you're going to have biased results that aren't really meaningful. Let's talk about this in the context of a story slash example. I'm going to tell you about the Height Report on Love, Passion, and Emotional Violence. This was released in 1987, and I'm going to start at the end by telling you the results of the report. Here's what the report showed. 70% of women married at least five years have had an affair. 87% of women say that their closest emotional relationship is with someone other than their husband. 95% of women say that they're, quote, emotionally and psychologically harassed by their love partner. And finally, possibly the most harrowing, 98% of women say they're generally unsatisfied with their husbands. So as you can imagine, this was huge. It was very sort of depressing. Lots of people were very concerned about these statistics because they're really awful. You're telling me 70% of women have had an affair in, in, in a marriage? Well, that's pretty scary. But let's take a step back and look at how they collected their data. What was their sampling method? In reality, there were lots of problems with their sampling method, but I'll tell you about the biggest three. First of all, all the data was collected by phone. They called people to participate in their study. Okay, this is 1987, you're already segmenting part of the population because not everyone has a phone to begin with. Second of all, even worse, all of the sort of participants in the study were, uh, were uh, subscribers, excuse me, to women's magazines. Okay, so there's probably differences between the type of women who subscribe to women's magazines and the type of women who decide not to. So again, you may not be getting a truly representative sample that reflects both sides of that coin. And here's the worst, the worst feature of their sampling sort of method and design, how they collected their participants. It was shown later that only 4.5% of people that they called actually decided to participate in the study. 4.5%. So think about this. That means 95.5%, if I did my math right, decided not to participate in the study. So imagine if you get a call and somebody says, hey, would you like to participate in the height report on love, passion, and emotional violence? All right, if you're perfectly happy in your marriage, you're probably going to say, no, I don't really have time for that. But if you hear love, passion, and emotional violence, and you're having all of these marital problems, you're probably going to want to participate. So again, we can't trust these results because it's not truly reflective of the entire population. So we're going to get rid of these results in a dramatic Thanos snap style. Sorry if you don't get that reference, but we can't trust these results at all. Thankfully, another sort of report, another survey went out and was released at a similar time from the Harris Organization, and they did use true random selection from the population, and they found the exact opposite results. In contrast to the Height Report, which reported that 98% of women were unsatisfied with their husbands, this report found that 89% of women were satisfied with their husbands. Again, exact opposite results just on the basis of using a different selection method for who gets to participate in your study. And finally, they found that only a small minority of people, uh, of women in particular, reported extramarital affairs. So in this case, we're a little bit relieved. Using an appropriate selection method, we get results that are a little bit more believable and certainly much less scary. Okay, so at this point, we've learned all of the basics regarding research and research designs. Now we can finally get to our first major content area in our next video, which is biological psychology.